Good morning and welcome to worship here at Salem Lutheran Church in Deerwood, Minnesota. It's good to have you here with us this morning on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, my kids always laugh at me when I say things like that, eighth Sunday after Pentecost. And I think last week I also said eighth Sunday, I was mistaken, last week is the seventh Sunday. Um, so welcome as we, as we worship together. Just a few announcements as we, as we get started this morning. First of all, um, prayers of sympathy for the family and friends of Clarice Lewick, who passed away July 12th. Her funeral was last Monday, um, July 20th. We'd also like to express our sympathy to the family and friends of Henry Hutchison, who passed away um, yesterday morning. Um, funeral arrangements are pending, and you can watch um, your e-news or um, the Coop Funeral Home um, news to see when that is going to happen. <clears throat> Many people to keep in your prayers, um, just a few to list. Um, Herb Schoen, um, Steve Holmvig is at Mayo, um, Justin Fort, um, and, and several others. And so please watch your e-news e um, for those names. The Salem Women's Retreat scheduled for October um, at Bay Lake Camp has been canceled. Um, we will plan on scheduling a retreat for October 21 on Church Island. Um, coming up next year, but um, this year's uh, retreat has been canceled. Help is needed. Outreach is in need of volunteers. Volunteer help both at Salem West and the Mustard Seed. Any amount of time that you could give is appreciated. Please call Jake or Dee to find out what times are needed. Summerfest is August 13th through 15th. We're having kind of a, uh, a limited Summerfest this year. Um, the Mustard Seed is going to have a rummage sale in the Mustard Seed parking lot. Um, setup will take place on the 12th, starting at 8 in the morning, and then on Saturday the 15th, there will be a smaller auction concluding at 3. Um, also on Saturday, um, the, Julie Fritz and her drum, drum group will be performing, so make sure you're there for that. The LED Electronic Sign Fund is getting close to the total dollars needed for a contract signing. Um, look in the August Salem Connection for details about our online quilt auction fundraiser, which will start Sunday, August 2nd. Um, we're hopeful that that will help us get that new sign um, off the ground this fall. <clears throat> Next week, we're gonna be having parking lot worship, um, although we're changing a little bit this, this coming week. Um, you're, you're invited, if you would like, to bring your lawn chair, um, and you can sit up in front of the parking lot in, in household groups, socially distanced, um, or you can stay in your car and listen on the radio. Um, communion will be served at that service. Um, you'll be served um, as, you, as you exit. There will be um, little communion kits that will be given to each, each worshiper. I believe those are all the announcements this morning. Um, we begin our worship um, by remembering the grace and mercy of God that brought us in, into this family of God in the words of the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins, whatever they are, are forgiven. So let us now live in hope. And our hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And as forgiven sinners, we sing, God who stretched the spangled heavens. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Romans chapter 8, uh, verses 26 to 39. These words celebrate the depth of God's actions for us. Through Christ's death for us and the activity of the Spirit praying for us, we are fused to God's love poured out in Jesus Christ. Nothing, not even death itself, is able to separate us from such incredible divine love. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined he also, also called, and those who he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not be with him, also give us everything else? Who will bring any change against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No one in these things are to be more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm is from Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine up on, upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Throughout Matthew's Gospel, Jesus and his disciples proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Here Jesus offers several brief parables that explore the implications of this announcement for people's lives. The Gospel, according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea, and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in faith, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. I've just learned that my life may change drastically in the next few months. Something's gonna happen that will change everything. It's kinda, it's kinda hush hush right now, but all indications point to it. I received an official letter from Publishers Clearinghouse that has assured me that I am among a very short list of candidates who may win a prize this fall. Several million dollars, I don't know exactly how many, and I won't bore you with those details, but the good news is I'm, I'm the one. They're gonna come to my house with a big check and balloons and cameras, and I'll try my best to look surprised. The bad news is you all are not the winners. So, well, too bad for you, I guess. But try not to let this information out. They'd really like to keep it a secret, but I just thought you'd like to know. So what would you give to have them visit your house with that big check? What would you give to get your hands on the winning Powerball ticket? I mean, wouldn't you sell everything you have if that's what it took? Take out a big loan, anything, it would certainly be worth it. Everything I own and all the money I could borrow are worth, le worth less than $100 million or whatever the Powerball is these days, just a tiny bit less. <laughs> 
Think of how having that ticket would change your life and the lives of your loved ones. <clears throat> Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like that. It's worth any price to attain it. It's like a man who found a treasure buried in a field. It didn't belong to him. It legally belonged to the owner of the field. So he went out and sold all he had in order to buy the field and therefore have legal claim to the treasure in it. And that treasure was so much more valuable than all his stuff, it was just a no-brainer, like buying the winning lottery ticket. Or the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who found a pearl of great value and he did the same thing in order to get that pearl. I knew a man who did stuff like that for a living. He took care of people's estates. He'd come into a house and make a bid on all the things inside it and then he'd sell those things at auction. But he was also an antique expert. And so now and then he'd go into a house and he'd see maybe a special um, sauerkraut crock, crock sauerkraut crock made about 50, you know, made in Red Wing back in the 1800s. They're just these huge things. Grandma hadn't made kraut in it for 50 years, so she used it to hold brooms and mops. But he knew there were only three like it left in existence. And people would pay tens of thousands of dollars just for that piece of pottery. Of course, he never told the family that. He'd make a bid on the whole household that he knew that would be taken, typically a few thousand dollars at the most, and then he'd make thousands on just that one piece. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like that. It's the piece that you'd pay anything you have to own because it's, so much, it's worth so much more than everything you own. I mean, can you feel the pleasure as you sign the check, knowing that it's going to change your life? The only question is, how do you get it? I mean, buried treasure is, by definition, really hard to find. Winning lottery, lottery tickets are pretty rare. And just because you're a pearl expert, it doesn't mean you're ever going to find a pearl of great price that's going to change your life. If the kingdom of heaven is like that, well then what good is it? How many of us are ever going to find it? Almost none of us are ever going to win the Powerball, no matter what they tell you on TV. And that's where this, the parable is different than our experience. The kingdom of heaven is precious treasure worth way more than any price we could pay for it. That part's true. But the really good news is, God has already promised it to you. It's yours. You already have the winning Powerball ticket. Every time we do a baptism around here, we hear these words. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God, and we are made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Now, if those words are in any way a reflection of reality, how could we ask for any more than that? How could we imagine any more? I mean, did you hear the gifts that are given? Freedom from sin and death. I mean, who wouldn't give anything to be free of death? Resurrection. Rebirth as children of God and inheritors of eternal life. I mean, what more could we win? It's worth any price. I mean, all the money in the world couldn't buy any one of those gifts. And what do you have to do to get these gifts? Nothing. <laughs> Listen to who's doing the doing in baptism. Our Heavenly Father frees us. Our Heavenly Father joins us to Christ. Our Heavenly Father gives us rebirth as children of God. God does it. God does it all. And God already did it all for you and for me. Gave us, gave us the very best gifts our Lord has to offer, already yours, already mine. The treasure 
the pearl of great price is already yours, free of charge. <laughs> wow. Okay, so if we won, where's the beef? <laughs> Why isn't life different for us? And that's where the other parables come in. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, but it grows into a great shrub that becomes home to birds and animals. The kingdom of heaven is like a handful of yeast that a woman hides in 50 pounds of dough. 50 pounds of dough, that's a lot of dough. Anyway, it's invisible, but somehow all the dough is leavened by just this little bit of yeast that you add. The kingdom of heaven is like a great net cast into the sea that brings in a load of fish and I'm sure the fishermen separate the good from the bad. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is, is the pearl of great price, but it's not universally known yet. It will be, but not quite yet. When our kids come home, we always prepare a special morning treat. Um, caramel rolls made with Rhodes frozen, frozen bread dough and butterscotch pudding, you've probably had them. And all you have to do is mix up the cinnamon and sugar and butter and pudding the night before and pour, pour it over these little, little round dough balls in a pan. And magically, in the morning, they're all big. And you bake them for 30 minutes and you've got warm, fresh rolls and they're great because they're so easy and they taste so good. The kingdom of heaven is like those little dough balls. The yeast is hidden in there, and during the night, it, the invisible yeast will do its work on those little dough balls. They'll rise and make something delicious. You just have to wait until they're done. Don't try and cook them early. It's not going to help. It'll just ruin the rolls. They need the whole night. But if you're patient, it'll happen. Slowly. Invisibly. Jesus is yeast in the world. I mean, one man, one man, what difference can one man make? Yet we've seen what has risen from this little bit of yeast hidden in the world. The church and eventually the kingdom of heaven, maybe they're not done yet, but they will be. Slowly, invisibly, it'll happen. I mean, Jesus is like the tiniest seed you can imagine for growing a forest. But he was planted, and a great shrub is growing, giving shoe, food and shelter to many, even if you can't really see it. Jesus is the net. He will bring in all the fish, including you and me, and one day all the hurts of the world, all the evil will be separated out. Evil will be gone. The kingdom of heaven is already at work, changing the world. Maybe you can't see it, but it's there, like yeast, a seed, a net. It will come. It will come. Paul had another way of talking about it. He said, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In other words, you already have the winning lottery ticket, the pearl of great price. God gave it all to you at your baptism. It's yours, like seed and yeast. The kingdom is growing, even though we can't always see it. And Jesus is alive and working still, changing lives, casting the nets farther and farther still. And we live not believing our eyes, but believing Jesus, holding on to him with all that we've got, because he is the treasure that's worth everything. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers, especially those seeking a vaccine for coronavirus. Treasuring the earth, may we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and to walk in the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes, intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. Especially today, we pray for Herb Schoen, Steve Holmvig, the family and friends of Henry Hutchison, the family and friends of Clarice Lewick, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We continue now with the communion service. Um, I'll, I'll do the words of institution and we'll share the Lord's Prayer. Um, when we get to the communion, um, you can serve one another with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Paul writes, Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.